Five twenty minute conversation. Recording in progress. Make it a little bit louder. All right, let's get started, everyone. For those who don't know, know me, my name is Diane Bungaidin. I've been with Solution Street for seven years now. I'm working currently on a project um, with a client GMAC or Graduate Management Admission Council. And earlier this year, I took a GCP certification exam and I got it. And so for today, I'd like to share um, Google Cloud Platform with you as an overview. So let's get started. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> go to the next slide. All right, so this talk is really just gonna be two parts. First, I'm gonna do some cloud basics and second, actual Google Cloud Platform. So let's go. What exactly is the cloud? I like, I like this comic here on this, that I found. It says, are you sure this is how we get data into the cloud with the balloon, like what looks like a CD and we, we save it up there, right? Like for a normal, you know, maybe non-tech people like cloud that, that's up there. Um, and like on a consumer level, when we think of cloud, it's sometimes people think it's just storage, right? If you have an iPhone, your iCloud, your Google Drive, um, Dropbox as well, OneDrive, these are like storage services or products. And sometimes people you know on the consumer level, they think that's it and that's the cloud. But really the more proper term is, my next is not as, okay. Um, is called cloud computing. Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services over the internet. That's pretty much what it is. As you can see in this image, storage, maybe I can use my mouse. Okay, yeah. Storage is just one um, uh, service or service offering. There's server offerings, mobile um, applications, database, and there's different kinds of um, models of, as well of, of cloud computing. So there's there's a lot more in cloud computing than just being a storage. And we're gonna look at some of um, these types of services in a few slides. But before we do that, why the cloud first? And if, and this one I'm gonna compare on-premise or on-prem as you know what you might hear more uh, versus cloud computing. So. To be able to, to differentiate them, I'm gonna give you an example here in the next slide. So let's look at the first up one third. So say you have a, a website, like you have a product, you have a website and you have, you're selling all these great products that you have and you're, you're, you're happy, you're great. You're, you, you have more people coming into your website and buying your products. However, you find yourself that during the holiday season, more and more people are going onto your website and now you need to support them. You need more servers. You need more resources because maybe your website is starting to crash because you can't have all of this volume. So you think you're very smart. On the second tier here, you see, okay, I'm gonna scale up. I'm gonna order servers. I'm gonna buy more. And then, then everybody's happy, right? Maybe January, February timeframe after the holidays has died down, you find yourself, wait a second. I have all these servers and resources and I don't know what to do with them at this point because holidays is not till maybe October, November again, and I don't need all of this. So now you have all these servers in your um, on-premise, in your, in your uh, building and in your you know, personal data center and they're just all idle and they're not doing anything and they're just, yeah, idle there. So that is one example of a use case on why maybe cloud is what's better for you. And I say that because cloud, and by the way, in this image right here that I used also two slides ago, these are the logos of Google Cloud Platform, AWS and Azure. And we're gonna talk about that as well in a few slides, but these are some of the benefits of using cloud computing. Cost, you only pay as you go. And, and if, you don't need, if you don't need all of that servers, especially on the timeframe that you don't need it, then you don't need to pay for it. Scalable, as we saw, uh, I mean, we didn't see, we will see <laughs> in, 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 my, in my demo later, that it is very easy to just create VMs and like um, uh, provision resources for, for the service that you need um, in, in very easily. We don't, you don't have to wait and order for your servers, you know, and until it arrives and you need to set it up. It's very quick if you do it from the cloud. 
it is performant. Oops. Oh, I see what happened. There was a camera. Yeah, that's what my, my notes got covered. So give me one. It's not your fault. So let me just move my screens here. Okay. Um, it's very performant. Um, data centers of cloud providers are all over the world. They have they 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 have regions in you know, Asia, Europe, America, obviously, um, and you know if you have a, a global audience for your website or whatever your your system is, um, it, it'll be faster if they can access from these data centers worldwide. And lastly, reliability because you can add data backups, disaster recovery from um, from the Google Cloud provider. You don't have to add extra buy servers for, for your disaster recovery. You can easily do that through um, your cloud provider. So those are the benefits as compared to on-prem. So as promised, let's us talk about some of the types of cloud services out there. These are the main three types of cloud services, IAS or infrastructure as a service, PaaS or platform as a service, and SaaS or software as a service. Now, I'm going to talk about the difference of these three, but before I do that, I want to say that there are other, you probably are starting to hear these other services out there, like FAST or Functions as a Service, IDAS or IDAS, Identity as a Service, DRAS for Disaster Recovery as a Service, and many more. And a more collective term for them is called ZAS or anything as a service now these days. So you'll hear more and more of this for more specific services, but really there's just three just main um, types of, of cloud service, services. So just so you know. So to compare the three, AAS, PaaS, and SaaS, I found this pizza as a service diagram that I, that I really enjoy looking at. And by the way, PaaS, it doesn't mean pizza as a service. It means platform as a service. <laughs> but, uh, and there's many, and it says 2.0, there's many versions of this diagram. And this, one, this is the one I, I is, this is my favorite. So let's look at, uh, let's try to understand what all these cloud services are. Let's start from the leftmost, um, maybe I can use my mouse. Okay, leftmost um, section here. So let's compare cloud with making homemade pizza, right? On a traditional or on-premise or legacy um, system, it's like a homemade pizza where you provide the electric or gas, your oven, you provide the fire, you make the pizza, you bring beer, you bring your friends, and you take care of, you know, you do your conversations, right? Infrastructure as a service, or IAS, is like a communal kitchen when making a pizza. You don't need to, you don't need to worry about electric and glass, gas, what I keep saying glass, electric and gas, um, and, and oven, as you can see here, green means this is, this is what the vendor manages, the cloud vendor manages, and then you manage the blue ones. But you have to manage the fire, pizza, beer, friends, and conversation. That is what IAS is. And if you look here at the rightmost, that is like, you don't need to worry about hardware and some virtualization, but you need to take care of what OS you want. You need to set up uh, the, the runtime, scaling, um, some functions you need to write those yourselves and some configuration. You need to do all that in an IAS or infrastructure as a service. Um, I have another example here, which is container as a service. Um, pretty much self-explanatory here. It's like bring your own. Here, platform as a service is next. It's like takeaway pizza. Everything, even up to the pizza is taken care of for you. You don't need to make that yourself, but you still need to bring beer and your friends and do your conversation which is like doing your own scaling, doing writing your own functions and configuration. That is what PaaS is. Same with functions as a service. And lastly, software as a service here. Pretty much you need, everything is taken care of for you. Someone will bring friends for you and beer for you, but no one will take care of conversations for you. You need to do that yourself. So that is what software as a service. And that is like an analogy of, of what these types of services are. So, Let's move on to the next slide. Since now you understand what the differences are of these three services, here are some examples of companies or products um, that are SaaS, PaaS, and IAS. 
Um, I don't need to read through all of them, but just look at some terms that maybe are familiar for you. Note that, for example, Salesforce, the product is, is a SaaS, but like force.com is, you know, also from Salesforce is their past offering, right? So you'll see the AWS Beanstalk is a pass, but the AWS EC2, that's their IAS offering. So yeah, just you see, you, you probably recognize Slack um, and obviously the G Suite that we're using, MS Office Suite. So those are examples here. Okay. So now that we've seen those products, um, let's look at um, the cloud providers, the vendors of those products that we've seen. In this infographic from Statista, um, we can see here that as of Q1 of 2021, AWS is the leading cloud provider with 32% of the market share. Azure comes second and Google Cloud is actually just third. Um, and then there's others too, Alibaba Cloud, IBM Cloud, Salesforce, Tencent, and Oracle Cloud. Um, but, so, but here you'll see that these are just some of the top um, cloud providers out there that, um, that you can you know, look into. Um, and this already, as a noted here with asterisk, this includes the PaaS um, and the IAS um, services that these um, companies offer. And so speaking of those IAS and PaaS offerings from those companies out there, we, can, we know that the top three cloud providers are AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. And just so you have a comparison, their IAS offering is called Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud for AWS. Azure, it's called Virtual Machines. And for Google Cloud, it's called Compute Engine. There's pass offerings, containers, and serverless functions as well. Um, and th these are just the, 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 top, the top four. I have here a link at the bottom, cloud at google.com slash free slash doc slash AWS Azure GCP service comparison. And if you go to that link, you will see something like this, where from the Google Cloud website, you can see um, what the, the corresponding AWS offering is for a specific service type. For example, for their CI CD, Google Cloud calls it Cloud Build. AWS calls it, looks like they have three different ones, Code Build, Code Deploy, and Code Pipeline. Not different, but like different purposes. And then Azure offering is called Azure DevOps and GitHub Enterprise. And there's more, obviously, if you scroll down, there's a lot. Um, but he, this is one resource for you to look at if you're interested about the comparison of the three. So now that we've seen the top three cloud providers and the different offerings that they have, maybe you're wondering, what is the best cloud provider out there, right? As we all know, it's Google Cloud Platform. I mean, it depends, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> It depends, you know, in, in, in my research in preparation for this for this talk, all of the answers that I found is really, it depends on what you need. So you, you need to do your own research, create free accounts for all of these, if, you know, if they have um, all of these cloud providers and you can test it yourself, data center location, networking requirements, types of workloads, seasonality, all of these, um, um, put together is a factor on, on what you need and what works best for you. So, and all of these, in all of these services as well, they have some kind of like a pricing calculator. Um, so you can have an estimate of like, what would be my monthly um, ex, you know, expenses if I set this networking um, config, this many uh, memory, this many, um, you know, um, whatever else you, you set, um, you, can, you can compare that as well. So you can do your own research. That's all I'm gonna say. But I will say about Google Cloud Platform, GCP services are run on the same infrastructure that Google uses internally for its end user products, such as you're very familiar with these Google search, Gmail, and YouTube. So if you trust that infrastructure, because it's, it's you know, it's, it's, we know these services, we almost use this all the time. So if you trust that infrastructure, know that GCP runs on that infrastructure. So you can, you know, depend, depend on that infrastructure. And also Google, um, commits to this developer first um, approach. And um, they're very committed to open source, um, like the Kubernetes product, um, they, they started it, um, there's TensorFlow as well. Um, so there's a lot of Google itself being developer first. So if you're a developer, maybe they say that GCP is more, um, 
developer focused, developer opinionated um, kind of, of, a, of a product. So those are just some few things I'll say about GCP. But again, I, I cannot answer what the best one is. So you're going to have to do your own research on that. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. What the, are you talking about AWS? Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, why would I trust Google? I, I guess my answer. Oh, were, were you saying about what was that data selling that you were talking about? Sorry. Well, I think what you were talking about the best product design. Mm -hmm. You know, evaluation of things. What about privacy? Ah, privacy. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have info on, on the privacy specifically, but yeah, definitely good 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 question there. Um, something to look between among those those options. So okay. Um, so that's the end of the cloud basics portion. I'm gonna move on now to Google Cloud Platform. So but before I do that, does anyone else have any questions? Oh, I'm sorry, could I repeat the question? Yes. Um, the question was. Well, you kind of, you also, um, so do we did, I didn't talk about, you know, I, I talked about, let me, let me go back, like data center location, networking requirements, or types of workloads. I didn't mention like privacy as a, as a, um, a feat, not feature, but like a, a concept, right? In, in, in these cloud services, in terms of privacy, which one is best among, among these cloud providers? And unfortunately I don't have an answer to that, uh, but definitely something I very good, um, uh, suggestion there. That's definitely something that's worth looking at. Data privacy is absolutely important. So, yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't have an answer on that question. So, all right. So, okay. I don't see any other questions here. So, yeah, let's move on to Google Cloud Platform. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Introduction to Google Cloud Platform. Let's just take a moment and look at these um, offerings that they have, only some of them. So they have compute on the left, upper left, there's compute um, services. Ne uh, below that is networking, and then storage and databases, identity and security, big data, and machine learning. These are just some of them. And if we look at my next slide right here, this is actually all, well, actually it's cut off at the bottom, but this is actually all of their Google Cloud products. Um, and this is called the GCP in four words or less. And if we zoom into it, you'll see, for example, in under their compute um, category, they have cloud functions and a short description is event-driven serverless functions. If you look at App Engine, it, it is the managed app platform and Cloud Run, serverless for containerized applications. So are you counting for right now? It's probably what you guys are doing. I did that too. <laughs> I found I found some that has like, like, like these glasses right here. I found it as one word. So I'm like, that's cheating. <laughs> I found some of them here, but pretty much four words or less as a short description of these products. Um, and there's, there's many out there. So definitely encourage you to look into that, uh, but yeah, th these are some of their products and we're gonna look at some of them today. But yeah, before, yeah. I like, oh, that's right, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to, since you mentioned that, I remember Jeff told me about that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this slide. In terms of naming their products, AWS, they're like, <laughs> Jeff called it like, Cute, cute names with air quotes, EC2, elastic, like elastic beanstalk. Like, what does that mean? But like for Azure and Google Cloud, it's kind of like straightforward, app service or app engine, you know, like, and then uh, like serverless function, AWS Lambda, but like Azure and Google Cloud functions and cloud functions. Yeah, that, that was a note that was, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There. <laughs> Athena. 
they're they're saying you need a certification to to understand what these AWS products are. <laughs> anyway, all right, good good I um let's go back. I should be able to go back to this and okay. So we're almost ready to do a demo, but just before that. These are just some of the GCP customers um, out there, PayPal, Home Depot, uh, Twitter, et cetera. And you can go to cloud.google.com slash customers to understand how GCP is helping um, these customers out there. So. Oh my goodness. I did not prepare for that quiz. He asked how many Solution Street customers use GCP? <laughs> I, I don't know the That'll answer, who knows? Ah, we know one. I lost it. Oh, why is it? It was just like a thought. Like, why is it like most um, uh, people like? Why is it that AWS is the leading right provider? Like thirty-two percent, and the others are like just twenty and, and like nine percent, etc. And I think in, in my research, I just found it because they were first in the market, and so they were able to get all these people to to trust them. But I'd like to open the floor. Does anyone have any other thoughts on why they think? AWS is the main number, the main, I mean, no, the, the top um, provider, cloud provider. So Debbie says advertising, okay? I think they have better advertising than these other services. Yeah, people are viewing. Cross. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I think the first in the market is the biggest thing. There's a huge variance between there aren't that many competitors, and then there's also like each cost to switch. You can love where this structure is going. So once you're in AWS, mm. it's a huge cost to switch. Mm. It's not a huge cost to switch from on prem to, oh. to you know boost mobile. Uh, when there's a low cost to switch, you're going to see more evening out once you're into similar services. Mm -hmm. But if there's a high cost to switch, yeah. Um, other other feedback from people here: um, more data centers, so better failover for AWS. Um, AWS scores better in terms of global reach, providing significantly more data centers around the world. Okay, that's from, from Rajesh, from John here. Azure is an easy transition for a Windows-based enterprise. If you have huge AD forest, forest and want to try to go cloud, Azure works, but for a long time, it, it wasn't as a good option for general thought. Ah, okay, good, good to know. Thanks for all your um, additional wisdom here. Um, my audience is gone. They they grab pizza. I have one. I have one here. No, but I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna continue on here. So thanks thanks guys for additional inputs. All right. So actually, really, my next slide is really just showing that we're gonna go now to cloud.google.com. And while I'm switching over, people are gonna come back here. So <laughs> let me <laughs> do that. Um, let me just hit pause, pause screen share for one second. If you just, um, if you could just let me do that real quick and then I'll move my monitor so it doesn't look terrible for you guys. All right, my screen is good now. Maybe I need to increase it a little bit. Okay, actually, that first. And then I'm going to share my screen again. Resume, share. All right. Oh, actually, I am, I'm already on the console. I forgot before the console. <laughs> so hard. Let me go to cloud. I said we're going to cloudgoogle.com. That's where I wanted to go first before we go to the console. Okay. We're now on the cloud.google.com page. This is your starting point for everything. Um, if you want to learn GCP and, and explore it, you'll hear at the you'll see here at the top, you know, information about why Google, the solutions, the different products, some pricing, and we're gonna look at the pricing calculator um, later too. Um, and some getting started tutorials and quick starts 
for you to get started and some other um, uh, client use cases here as well in, in the solutions section. So this is just your first, your first uh, spot, a stop, but now we're gonna go to the console um, and I already have an account. Um, they're free tier. Um, so this one that I created for the interns, interns presentation a few months ago, um, it looks like, let me just check this. Oh, I lost the gift icon. It's probably gonna pop up. Anyway, it's still loading. Yeah, oh, there you go. So I still have 23 days on this account that I created. Um, the free tier is for 90 days and you have $300 dollar credit. Um, and yeah, so you that's, that's the, the free tier. So I'm gonna dismiss this and now we're here on the console of GCP dashboard. This is the dashboard. You'll see in from, um, high level information of all the products and services that you have running in your console, in your uh, platform, some project information, some getting started guide. And I will say, this is where you will start. If you need to leave this meeting right now, please know that this getting started right here, and also it's available here in the navigation menu. And I'm gonna, maybe I should maybe I should click that. This getting started right here is what will help you um, get started with like the, the, the products, do the basics, some checklists to look at, the different products as well. Um, and so you can explore it yourself, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. Just know that there's, there's a way for you to learn that. Um, and other things here, I have a I have a deployed app engine already on this on on this um, instance of my platform of GCP. Um, so that's why I have I have it here. Um, I have some. Um, uh, this is APIs related to that to that app engine that I have. So there's some graphs here. I don't have a lot of good graphs to show right now, but you will see graphs here once you have, um, for example, your VMs or whatever functions or app applications that you have here, some monitoring here on the side, error reporting, and billing information too. You'll see, um, because I have a free estimated charges, it's zero for this billing period, but you'll see, you know, if, if you have the full account, you'll see more information here on your dashboard. So, um, let me just put my note here, my slide. So that's the dashboard. Let's go back. I was showing earlier this left navigation menu. This is where you'll find all the different products. Um, you can pin them, you know, whatever you, you use most. So I'm going to scroll down. There's compute products. There's the serverless. There's storage. There's databases. There's many more if you scroll down. You can also find these services. If you know the names, you can search them here at the top. The search products and resources um, search bar here. You just search for compute and yeah, you can go to that service, which is um, actually our, my first demo for today. So let's go to that. We're gonna create compute engine. If you remember is the IAS offering of GCP. So for this demo, we will create a one VM instance. So let's look, let's see how easy that is to do here in GCP. So I don't have anything right now, so it's empty. So let's create an instance together. All right, so um, maybe I should zoom in for our audience here in the room. All right, so um, so there's options. You can create instance or instance from a template or from a for an image, etc. But let's just use these default va default values here um, when as we create our VM. So we pro provided our name, um, GCP. Demo DM. We'll just call it like that. Name is permanent. There's a lot of like helpful information here. Um, like for example, name must start with a lowercase, etc. So you'll have that. Um, and as you're right, and and then you're gonna go through like choosing choosing the regions. Um, there's some Americas, Europe regions, um, and then for each region, there's um, different zones as well. Um, you'll see you'll see options on like machine, con machine configuration, some processor, some CPU and memory options. These are the options that they have. They have high memory, 
uh, low CPU or high CPU, low memory options, or you can make it, you can use their custom, um, where's the custom option here? Oh, oh it's at the very top. <laughs> um, custom one where how many, how many cores do you need? How many CPU and scroll down and how many uh, memory you need? You can see that here. I'm going to scroll up a little bit because I kind of, I kind of skipped here on the right, on the right corner. Oh, oh wait, because I was using, I keep forgetting. I was using the, I think if I use custom, I don't see it. If I just change the machine types, um, the standard ones, we see here on the right, there is an estimate, monthly estimate um, for the VM uh, that you're about to create. That's going to be 0 0.077 hourly and um, yeah, some estimated estimated costs as you actually are creating your 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 instance. So you'll notice right now it says fifty six point uh, and nineteen cents per month, uh, and if I if I change that, that will change to two hundred twenty one dollars per month. So, um, it because it depends on on your choice. Like if you have more more CPU, and this this one is more CPU and more memory. That's why it's higher than the, this, this one is two CPU and eight, yeah. Oh. Um, any fees? So it's pretty much uh, the breakdown here is is just that, um, the, the persistent disk, the memory um, and any discount. It's That's, that's pretty much it, Not, no other hidden fees. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. But I will say this is still an estimate, so. It may it may still be like not not an exact um, amount that in the end. So, um, so yeah, there's there's other options here. You can change the OS, um, and but we're not going to go through all the settings. Let's just go ahead and create this instance. So there's a notification here. You'll also hear on the right see on the rightmost. This is the notification bell icon. It's it's spinning. It's doing something. So let's just wait a few moments to look at this. Um, VM that we are creating. So it's probably grabbing it, looking for the right, you know, the region, the zone that we selected and finding the right um, server for us. Okay, that was it. Looks like our VM is up and running. It says green, it's running. Um, there's um, in use by, if you have other products using it, there's the internal IP, external IP, and you can immediately connect to it here from the browser. Uh, through SSH. So let's go ahead and look at that um, VM that we created. So it's just connecting there and we should be able to, to log in here. So, but as you can see, that was how quickly we can create uh, a VM from, from GCP. I'm just gonna wait until it's done and then we're gonna move on to our other Oh, there you go. Um, so yeah, it has some information. It's it's Linux, Debian, that's the um, OS that I selected. I hope you guys could read that. So you can do whatever pretty much you want to do with your VM now that's it's it's there. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what kind of <laughs> it's just uh, yeah, commands that you can use here, Linux command. So all right, so let us close this and let's move on with our demo. Let's leave this and um next demo i'd like to do is this cloud shell right here so and i think um other services as well they have this uh this shell like a terminal um to be able to do things within your gcp instance so um let's connect to that and let's and you can do it here from the browser and let's look at there's so as you can see i was able to create uh, an, a VM instance while on the GCP UI, right? You can do a lot more by using um, the cl cloud shell. Uh, as developers, you know, we like, sometimes we like um, just typing things um, and, you know, remembering the commands. Um, maybe maybe it's, it's, it's more flexible than doing things on the UI. So this cloud shell is what, what people uh, like to use more, especially developers. Um, so some, so G Cloud is, um, what what it's called the shell command for GCP. Um, there's help for um, just to see like the different you know what it, 
G Cloud is the managed Google Cloud platform to manage Google Cloud platform resources and developer workflow. Um, you know how to use G Cloud. You provide a group, a command, the account or the project, etc. Um, oh, there's a description here of what G Cloud CLI is and how you'll use the different flags and parameters that you can pass with it. There is also, I'm going to exit out of this. There's also a G Cloud, oops, I cannot type, cheat sheet. Um, oh, did I misspell that? Oh, <laughs> I did misspell it. Thank you. <laughs> cheat sheet. Okay, so um, again, more about G Cloud, but you'll see here more of the, the, the full um, commands. Um, like for example, for personalization, you can look, see G Cloud config, uh, config list, config configurations. Um, for credentials, you can use G Cloud auth login. Um, and there's, there's something about, I'm gonna scroll down to like the VM. So we just created a VM. So let's try to use one of these options right here. G Cloud compute, how about the, maybe the instances list? Because we just created one instance. So hopefully this will tell us uh, list um, the instances that we have. So that's G Cloud compute instances list. So let's try that. I cannot type with other. Oh, I forgot the word list. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> instances list. Okay. Oh, so we you need to get authorized first, um, requesting your credentials to make GCP API call. Uh, so depending on depending on the um, command that you're doing, and there you go. Oh, what happened? Okay, there you go. Here at the bottom, there's only one uh, GCP. I mean uh, VM that we created. Here's the zone. Here's the machine type and the other information about the VM that we just created. So you can use. Um, that cheat sheet that I, I showed earlier just to see what other commands you can do um, with G Cloud. So, all right, so that's the G Cloud section. Let's move on. So let me close this. I, I, I do wanna mention, so we have, um, while we're in the G Cloud, it has a, an, a, a, an editor, a Cloud Shell editor as well. For example, you have code in your app engine. I think I have one, I have an application deployed in my app engine. Uh, you can see, you can modify actual code um, from from this view as well. Uh, it takes takes a little bit of, of connection first, um, but you can use all these tools as well. Ugh, okay, there you go. So I have I have a, a mini. Oh yeah, it was a Python application I had uh, I deployed, and so I can I can modify um, these these files right here from uh, the Cloud Shell um, editor right here. So we don't need to do that. Let's go ahead and close this. Cloud Shell Editor, and now we're back to our main um, GCP screen. Uh, next, I want to talk about the Marketplace. So Marketplace, ooh, ooh, ooh. okay, so it's the first, first one here. Um, now that you have a, um, a VM created, so maybe you, you want to install um, uh, programs or um, other solutions that are already ready-made. For example, there is a WordPress um, uh, solution that you can deploy on, on the VM that you created. Um, the marketplace is the place to look for these solutions out there from vendors. Some are free, some you have to pay for. Um, some free trial, you can filter them from by free trial. You can filter them by the services um, that they're for. For example, let's look at um, virtual machines, I guess, since, since we created, we just created that. So some, these are, what are these? Some ah some oh oh these are OS. This is for for hybrid cloud and Kubernetes. So you can see their description looks like this one has a five day free trial. So if you look at that, let's look at one of them. Um, yeah, you can launch it immediately, and you don't you know you can just as a developer you can just launch this and deploy this on your GCP platform. And then just just get just get going and, and start coding. Although this one is just an OS, so like it's not really the, the coding part. But it's it's this this is a way um, for GCP to have you know to help developers um, get going with what they need to do and just focus on the application, not just um, not like setting up your infrastructure and stuff. So anyway, so there's more information about that. 
um, and some pricing information that are useful as well. So yeah, and some looks like some tutorials as well is available. So yeah, um, there's WordPress. What what else did I see earlier? There was some. Um, oh, let's look at some of the big data um, solutions out there from vendors. Um, Neo4j, I, I, I haven't used this, uh, but Vietnam, I'm familiar. Um, what else? Couchbase. All right. So a lot of these, I'm not familiar myself. Oh, Kafka. I know we have a project that uses Kafka. So yeah, you can, you can deploy that from here straight from, from the marketplace. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's that about the marketplace. Let's look at our time. Okay, we have about 15 minutes. Um, let's maybe let's look at cloud functions next as another. Um, so obviously we're not gonna go through all of the products of GCP, but I'm just like picking some that maybe you'll be interested in. So earlier we looked at Compute Engine, you know, IT, DevOps people, they do, um, they set up VMs themselves, but maybe, you know, some of us, some of us just wants to just wants to code. So let's look at the cloud functions um, product or, or service. And here it's just really just a function, right? It's not even a full on application. So I don't have any functions right now. So let's look at how to create a uh, function from GCP. So say um, basics, um, you provide a function name, you choose the region on where your function will be. Um, the trigger, so you have a function. So what, what triggers that function to run? So you have HTTP, if you go to that um, API that you have, Cloud PubSub, if you have a publisher and a subscriber, uh, a storage, if you upload something to a cloud storage, um, maybe you want your function to run like, okay, I got I got this, um, I don't know, this file, I need to send an email to Joel, for example. So you, you can set up your GCP so that you have a cloud storage and you have a, an event list, uh, a, a function that lists it, that, um, gets triggered from a cloud storage event. And then you can even add like an action on what to do, maybe send an email or notify something. You can do those kinds of, of use cases. So let's just select HTTP um, and other settings here. Uh, let's just select this for, for, for now. And there's other settings too that you can look at. Oops, I scrolled too much. Runtime, build, um, connection, security. And, but yeah, we're not gonna walk, go through all of these settings, but let's just go ahead and save this function. Um, oh, is that it? Oh, some auto scaling number of instances, max number of instances, you can set that here. Um, we're just gonna skip that for now. And yeah, now, so you can select the, the runtime um, that you know you, you wanna code with. So um, they, so, Cloud functions support Go, and these are the versions. Oh, .NET Core first, Go, Java 11, Node.js, PHP, Python, um, and Ruby. And so, yeah, these are all the different um, runtime programming languages you use. So let's just use this example for sake of our time here. It's just a simple hello world. And um, you can look at this JSON file, um, package.json, you can write your code here and immediately you can easily deploy that function. Um, and while that's that's being saved, let me just quickly read a question from our online audience. Is there an extensive API? Are there a, a, any functions you can do via the UI or not over API? Oh, is this was when um, I was probably showing the, the CLI. Is there an expense, extensive, extensive API? Um, yes. Yes, there are. Are there any functions you can do by the UI or not over API? Functions, so I, I think I said um, earlier, you can do a lot more things on, um, oh no, I was talking, I was talking about CLI, not, not the API. Uh, I, I do not know actually, that's a, that's a good question, um, Joe. In terms of like API versus UI, I know I was aware of like CLI versus the UI, but not API versus the UI. I, that's a good question. I don't have an answer to that. Um, but yeah, sorry about that. I think the question is more like everything in Cloud Shell. What was that the API I that he's saying? Okay. Oh, 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 okay. Because that, yes, that. Cloud Shell is. 
Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yes. I mean, I, al I also know that Amazon AWS very definitely has an API first, and there there's probably some things you can find in the API, but not in the in the console. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if Google is similar, or if there's anything in Google in that you have to go to the console, or or if it's all controllable via the API. Yes, yes, there's the, the API is, is the CLI API is, is more flexible, you can do more settings um, than 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 the console. Uh, I don't have that off the top of my head, but but yes, it's uh, the cloud uh, API is, is more powerful than the console. So, but yeah, I don't, I don't have what, what those are right now. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for that additional information for AWS Joe. Um, okay, so let's go back to our cloud function that we created. Where is my mouse? Okay, um, let's see. What can we do with our cloud function now? We can um, test test this function. Um, if we pass it a parameter we saw earlier, we can pass it a parameter, or we don't have to. It's optional, as we saw in the code. Actually, we can we can view the source code here. Um, yeah, if we pass it a message, or if not, it'll just print "Hello World." Uh, as a as our response, so let's look at our test and I'm, I'm I'll just oh I don't like this scrolling part okay and yeah I'll just I'll just leave it empty and then we'll just see that um, it's okay so the output is hello world <laughs> very simple and you can see the results of of your function out here so yeah that's just a very simple example I just use defaults to to make it quick and easy um, that is. Cloud function. So the last item that I want to talk about in my demo is the pricing calculator that I sh I mentioned earlier. So we have to go back to cloud.google.com um, and go to pricing. And I think this is helpful for especially you know for your own um, you know uh, learning. And also if we have clients who are like, hey, which one should I use? Should I do GCP or AWS? I think the pricing calculator will help um, in, in your research. So. You can select the different products that you're going to use, that you, you think you're going to use. So say you have Compute Engine, or maybe you want to use their Kubernetes um, engine service. Um, you provide you know, information, for example, total number of nodes. Oh, I wonder if my audience here can see this. Okay, let me make that bigger a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll just say three for now, and then some other settings that you can provide. Um, there's, I'll just use the default here, and then add to estimate. So here on the right, you'll see that they're, they are getting added. So for example, you have a plan in mind I was describing, maybe you want to have uh, a storage and then you also have uh, like cloud functions and then you want to add um, like other actions, uh, other products or services in your um, in, in your yeah list, list of products. You can add all of them here, keep, keep adding them, use this add to estimate and they will all get added here. So maybe let's add Maybe, um, so since we have maybe some networking, so, okay, maybe we want some um, some networking um, products here. So let's add, okay, so I'm just going, to, oh, I need to select, I need to select some of these values. Uh, internet egress premium tier. Oh, I'm not, I, I haven't used this one. <laughs> let's use another one. Maybe you have some big query for data, data storage. Let's. Let's try this one. Um, so you're gonna provide a name, interesting. How about some flat rate, on-demand flat rate options, okay. Um, and then you need to provide some active storage. So let's just add some values on these guys, all right. And now we can add it to our estimate. And we can see the total the total amount. So for the GKE, um, here's, an, here's the monthly $72 per month. And then on top of that, for the BigQuery service, um, for for data storage, it's wait oh <laughs> ten ten thousand. What was I? BigQuery <laughs> per month. That's that's from the slots. Okay, I said five hundred slots in in Iowa and one gig, etc. Ten thousand dollars. So obviously you can just play play around with these um, numbers that I use here so anyway that's that's a pricing calculator you can play with it however you want and you can help hopefully this will help decide with 
if you're using GCP or what product in GCP you're going to use versus other cloud providers out there. So that is the end of my presentation. Actually, before, actually, that is not the end of my presentation. <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to go back to my slide and just, I just have a couple more slides to show. Um, but that's the end of the demo part. Uh, so that was, we were here. Um, what is, oh, we, I added, okay, I saw this. So in preparation for this demo, I deleted the instance that I had running. So where's my mouse? Um, but I just, I, it was, I, I didn't notice that there was a recommendation section when I created that instance. There's a recommendation section and it said, um, this instance is underutilized. You can say $57 by, you know, based on how I was using it. So I really like that it gave me some recommendations based on my utilization report. And I can save $107 per month if I switch to this recommendation that um, they're suggesting, which is why won't you switch to this custom one with this core and memory, and then you can apply it to your VM. So I, I saw that actually kind of late. So I just took a screenshot and then I added it to my slide. Um, we have about five minutes left. Okay, so I just want to end this presentation with, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, I did a certification, right? I did the, the associate one. I'm, I'm new to GCP. Um, I don't, uh, and it, actually in, in cloud in general, in cloud computing, I'm, I'm, I'm new there as well. So I decided to just take um, this associate cloud engineer certification path and um, Google itself has a lot of resources um, for you to learn if you want to take a uh, certification in Google as well. Here's their path. So they have foundational, associate, um, yeah. professional, um, and then, but I will say in my preparation for, for the exam, I used this, okay, <laughs> I used this um, training course online from A Cloud Guru, a company that acquired Linux Academy, you've probably heard of, of, of these companies. Um, I like their GCP um, certification exam and it really i think it really prepared me for the exam so i will recommend this training course i have added this in the company's list of of courses um but that's um, that was my path for certification there's books and other resources other courses online that you're welcome to look into but my recommendation is this from a cloud guru so that is the real end of my presentation thank you for coming and for listening and questions Hopefully, I have answers this time. Repeat the question for audience. As someone who's new, um, you know, to, to GCP and really to, to, to cloud in general, is, is there is the right? What would be the first product that she can try? And I, I know Larry as a developer, um, I think I think what I showed the cloud functions, that's probably one one place, the first place to go, because that's just a function. It's not even a whole application. But maybe also the app engine, because you can write applications and then you just have to deploy it on the cloud, but you can have like a full on, a, you know, bigger than a function too. Um, those are the first few products I'd, I'd recommend. But yeah, there's the quick starts that I showed earlier, the tutorials, hopefully those will help you. Um, yeah, as, as you explore other products. So yeah. what else do we have other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think something you learned in your certification and training that you didn't talk about today that you think is important. That I think is important to think about that. I, I memorize a lot of things, <laughs> like, like you know, I had to memorize the um, like the, the CPU memory, like thirty-two eight, like like those things. But it's important. Um, I think. Oh, I, the the cloud shell commands. I had to memorize some of those as part of, of my training. It was you know, if you're taking a certification, they have questions about um, the, the actual cloud shell commands and like. You know, you know these exams, they can be confusing. Is it G Cloud instances list or is it G Cloud list instances? So those those uh, are important in terms of taking the exam. Um, what uh, did I answer your question? Like these are pertaining to take the exam or just in general. Oh. 
Mm -hmm. um, about that, a little bit more. <laughs> That's important. I, I was like back in March and, um, oh, I think like use cases, um, as in if, if your company, oh yeah, if you're, okay, this one, if your company has needs storage solution and this, and this data, you actually don't need to access it every day. You're, you're, you only need to access it once a month or even maybe not even a year because it's archive data. What kind of solution should you go through? So I think that's important as you decide for solutions and products for, for your clients or for yourself. So those kinds of like use case um, scenarios, those are part of this. Yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> you have us up first. Oh, Oh yeah, yeah. They have their identity and access management. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I was new to, to, so I am first. But how, how did I find that? Let me go back to <laughs> what it looks like. Screen sharing has stopped. Oh, I see because I, I escaped my screen. Okay, I'm not sharing anything. So I think we can just listen here on. Uh, I don't need to share my screen again. I am so some of the things that I remember like what oops, if you need to uh, if you have some resources that uh, only need to access this kind of product or this kind of service, those are the um, uh, parts of IAM that, that are available. What what is uh, like like admin versus someone who can just view versus they have oh. <laughs> Things are coming back as, as 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 I'm talking. So they have like the the, the default um what's the word default uh roles like uh like view or, or admin or whatever. And then there's like a second level where you can add more to it. And then there's like even more customized kind of roles. So yeah, I am. It was a lot of roles that I remember. Um, what else? That's that's, that's what I remember right now. <laughs> but it was it's pretty good. It's it was also part of the exam. Which of these can al allows you to do this kind of, of action? And they all look similar, but obviously there's, there's only one answer. It's, it's just the the view folder. Yeah, I don't know the actual term right now, but yeah, I am. Um, Jeff, you had a question. Yeah, what, um, oh, we're actually. I saw the, the, I don't know, Google Block Fire, basically Google Block Fire. So do they offer cloud SQL databases and NoSQL databases. Yes. Okay. Yes, they have SQL and, and NoSQL. Um, they have so many for their storage. There's wide, there's Spanner for the wide. Oh, what did I do? Um, wide, wide um, scaling, but there's also like, like, yeah, like, like that <laughs> vertical, vertical scaling. And then, and then the storage solutions that I described earlier, like how many, how often you need to access those kinds of things. Let me read some questions here from our audience. Does GCP have an equivalent of AWS spot instances? Now I'm gonna need to look at what spot instances is. Oh, <laughs> sorry. There are various instances you can bid on by the hour, typically for running jobs that are in time critical. Oh, I think what you're describing, are these preemptive um, VMs? Is that is that where, um, by the hour, oh no, is it by the hour running? Aren't time critical, um, typically for running jobs. And are these like the kinds of um, instances where um, it's okay if it if it dies, it, it can it can come back up and then you know take take from some queue and continue um, doing what it's doing. Yes, yes, okay, there you go. Yes, they do. It's called preemptive VMs. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Pre yeah, like not not preemptive, so like just full. Well, you did like on demand, so you subscribe to it. Oh. Oh. Uh, like a contract. Oh, good question. Hmm. I, I want to say I want to say yes, but I'm yeah, I, I'm not one hundred percent sure. It'll have PM. I'll assume that I'll get the VM for an hour if my bid wins, for example. Mm. So who is this? Uh, e, e Mac. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you for checking. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know his name. We're actually um, over time now. Thank you our, um, for, to our audience in online. Um, thanks for listening. This is recording, so it'll be, avail it'll be available um, at some point. So I'm gonna stop recording.